Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to today's video in which I will do a rundown of my winter loadout and to be more specific, you know, a comparison about my summer, spring, autumn loadout compared to the winter loadout because there's some small minor differences, but they can make the difference between an amazing game day and a game day which is cold or where your gear just doesn't work. So let's get started from top to bottom. Here I'm running a hat from Red Hat. I got this from a Best Pro Shop. Nothing really special. It is winter camo and it's warm. And also you could actually turn it inside out and now it becomes a hit marker, which when I bought it, I thought, man, it's a great idea. Now I have a hit marker on my head. Usually it's full of snow and then you turn it inside out and then all the snow ends in, uh, yes, in your neck and all that. So not the best idea with the whole red thing, but uh, if you just wear it like this, it's perfectly fine. And I have the hit marker right here anyways as a backup. Then the uniform that I'm wearing is an LBX Snow Raptor, which I got when I was visiting the factory. Very hard to get in Europe, but in America, I think it's widely available. Price performance, I think it's pretty good. It's not too expensive and it's, you know, good enough for airsoft. It doesn't have any thermal capabilities though, so you need to wear something warm underneath. Gloves are mechanics and you could argue that those are too cold and they are actually too cold but I rather have more control over my guns and I can actually find magazine release buttons and all that before having warm hands. That being said if you have completely cold hands all of this doesn't do anything for you but I usually don't have problems with it so it works for me. Now let's talk about the gun. Here I'm running man I can't really talk about this gun. It's still a prototype but obviously if you're running a Sniper rifle in winter, spring powered might be your best option because gas doesn't work properly anymore and HBA sniper rifles. Ah, I guess you could use them, but it's not my preference as I think spring is the most reliable system out there because, you know, you just take it to the game and it works. What you have to make sure though on spring powered sniper rifles is that you have a piston head that works in cold temperatures. A lot of sniper rifles struggle with that. And then also you need a hopper bucking that works uh, in cold temperatures. Here you can even go with the silicone based ones because they really function very well once it's cold. Other than that, the sniper rifle is... I can't talk about the sniper rifle. But anyways, um, scope on top is an average scope. Uh, here it makes no difference, you know, summer, winter works all the time. So nothing special right here. Sling obviously has to be adapted because you're usually fatter in winter just because you're wearing more clothes. So keep that in mind. The scarf is nothing special as well. Um, I just took it from my grandma's clothespin, which she doesn't use anymore. So any scarf really does the trick if it's white. And you know, obviously all of this equipment only makes sense if it's white. I mean, not the wall, more like the game field. Not that something happens to you as it happened to Sinan, where it was completely white and then he showed up to a field where there's no snow. Uh, when it comes to the gun, I usually don't cover my gun white. I don't think it's necessary because you have branches in the forest and they're not white too. But here is the confusion camo, you know, it just happens to be white, which is not a disadvantage. But I think that taking the effort to camouflage your gun is usually very much worth it uh, in summer, spring and autumn. But when it comes to white guns, I don't think it's necessary. You can just keep it black in winter and that's totally fine. Moving further down, we have the Gen 2 laser cut battle belt. I think here it's really important that you use the Velcro combination, especially my setup, because I don't have a drop leg holster right here. The pistol is only here mounted to the battle belt. I don't have a support towards the leg. So if you don't have the Velcro, it can happen that, you know, this whole thing starts moving on you. But with the Velcro, uh, I think you guys have seen it a million times, but the battle belt doesn't move and it just stays in place, which is nice, even though I don't have a drop leg holster. Important when it comes to magazine pouches in winter is that they're full seal. Um, those are specifically designed for this rifle right here. They are full seal, so they completely cover everything up. They are quiet, which is always a good to have as a sniper and of course easy to draw and put back the mag. Pistol of choice is not the SSP because the SSP doesn't work in too cold temperatures as it's a gas blowback pistol. But with the non blowback SSX-23, it's no issue whatsoever. That being said, this pistol has to be used differently in winter. I'm going for the Nimrod Black Gas. This one right here, super strong, works in cold temperatures. And I'm also going for 0 0.28, 8 gram BBs instead of the 0 0.36 gram BBs. Then it works perfectly fine. You can still take those super amazing long range shots. Uh, I'm running always the medium length suppressor because I think it's the best compromise of length and um, sound suppression. Grenades, I don't have any grenades. Grenade pouch is empty, it's still mounted from summer and I'm too lazy to take it off, so it just stays there. Universal pouch, uh, it's nice to have hand warmers in there in case your mechanics are too thin. And then here on the left side are 
uh, is another magazine pouch for my sniper rifle. And then we have three SSX magazine pouches, obviously on the left side, because I'm right-handed. So if I want to do a tactical reload, I can just, you know, perform that real quick and put the magazine back without having to do any cross drawing or anything like this. Rubber knife is always on me. Not really functional, you don't really need this as an airsoft player, but it's just super cool in the videos if you have a rubber knife and, you know, man, doing knife skills is just amazing. You could also just tap in, but again, the knife is just a nice to have. Trousers is also LBX Snow Raptors, and if you cannot get your hands on this in Europe, there is a very cheap alternative. Let me get it real quick. This stuff right here is Mill Surplus. This is what I've been using before LBX. Uh, gave me this uniform. It's just as good. Honestly, I just use this one because it looks cooler, but camouflage wise, this might even be superior uh, because snow is not gray. Snow is white and you have those dots here on it. Man, those things are basically for free. They cost like, I think five euros or something. They are used from, this one is from the German Bundeswehr. So again, this is your best bet, especially you know, how many winter games do you really play where there's snow? I think this year we didn't even have snow yet, so you maybe use it once or twice a year. And investing in a uniform like this might be a little bit too expensive for how often you use it. Now comes the most important part of your equipment, which is the thermo underwear that's beneath your clothes. I usually work in a, at the Austrian military, they call it onion system, because it's not one big jacket, you know, and if you get too hot, you remove it and then you're too cold. No, it's different layers and you just pack yourself as much as possible because in the game breaks, you know, you get cold and then when you start playing, you just take off a layer, take off another layer. And those layers are always beneath your PDU so they don't change colors throughout the game. Because obviously if you wear ski underwear in red, it's not gonna work. That's been working perfectly for me. So how about you? How do you run in winter? What's the difference in your gear? Do you run a completely different gun, a different style, different clothes? Maybe you don't play at all because it's just too cold. So let me know what do you do in winter. Also let me know which grenades you use in winter because I personally haven't found any grenade that's reliable in winter. Maybe have some recommendations for me that's not pyro because pyro is usually not allowed. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I see you on the next one. Also, if you want to learn about the new gun that I am developing on, you can go visit norwich.com slash soon. There I will, you know, give you updates. If you enter your email, I'm going to send you uh, emails about what's happening with this project.